Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here and first off, sorry for the lack of videos over the last three weeks here. After the Goose video, I went on a work trip that was about seven or eight days. I came back from that, instantly came down with the flu, which was terrible. I hope you guys uh, don't get the flu this season and I was pretty much on bed rest for like four or five days. So that put a huge damper on my ability to make videos. Uh, and this video in particular wasn't one that I actually had planned on making for you guys. It just sort of happened and I figured it would be really interesting to show you guys um, me troubleshooting a 3D printer, kind of what the sort of what was going on and what my process was to try to fix it and how I was uh, able to fix it and show kind of the results from before and after. Um, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at the uh, JG Maker or JG Aurora Magic 3D printer that uh, myself and Aaron put together on uh, video months ago. This was back in the old apartment and I haven't done a whole lot of printing with it. I decided to do a little bit of printing with it and uh, I noticed that on every single print that I was doing, at first I thought it might have been just a certain um, print, that there was some serious like swollen part where the part just looked fatter than it was supposed to for, I don't know, maybe four millimeter, five millimeter roughly. Um, and I couldn't figure out at first what it was. I checked in the slicer to make sure that there was no funky slicing in the G code that was going on. Um, and that wasn't it. I also went ahead and printed out a Benchy model alongside of the initial print and it was, uh, it was repeatable. So I knew at that point that it had to be something to do with the hardware since it was happening at the exact same uh, layer range um, on, on these different prints. So since it was happening in the Z and it was uh, basically again, kind of like the Z was swelling at a certain point, uh, I figured that maybe the lead screw was bent. So first thing I did was I took the lead screw off of the uh, machine and I just rolled it on a flat surface to see if there was any um, really obvious wobble uh, as well as taking a flashlight to it just looking at the shadow to see if I saw any part that looked like it wasn't uh, a straight surface and that didn't seem to be the issue. I even went ahead and flipped the lead screw over to see if maybe it was on one portion of it that was messed up. If I flipped it then the print would turn out fine but when I put it back together and I hit print, uh, it was still not working. I was still having the exact same like swollen layers um, for a bit there. So the next thing I did was I actually, with my hand, turned the lead screw to see what was happening as the as the whole gantry was rising up and down around that area. And that's when I that's when I came into a conclusion uh, as to what was probably going on. And so as I was lifting up the X carriage. Uh, I noticed that it seemed to have a certain point where it was sticking. So the left side of the X carriage wasn't going up, but the right side was, and the left side would then quickly catch up after a certain, you know, certain amount of turns. And what I ended up um, uh, basically determining was that the X carriage, since it's only supported on one side with one lead screw and not on both sides, one of the sides had some serious slop to it, which this isn't super uncommon, and a lot of times it doesn't cause problems. Usually you're able to make it where it's, you know, you adjust the bed accordingly, or um, you're able to tighten the uh, eccentric nuts on the X carriage, but this particular machine didn't have any of the eccentric nuts. And if you don't know what those are, uh, they are basically a washer that looks almost like a nut, and it has a hole that goes through it that's offset. And so what that offset hole does is that, let's say you have the X carriage and it's a little bit loose. Well, if you turn that eccentric nut, it'll offset the, um, the hole or the, or the washer or the nut or whatever you want to call it. And it'll cause it to tighten up. So if you've got a little bit of slop, you tighten the two eccentric nuts and it creates more of a rigid frame. And th this is really common on all of the Creality machines or the Creality clone type machines or any machine that uses like 2020 uh, or aluminum extrusions and V-slot wheels, it's really common to have those nuts on there to, uh, again, make sure that your machine is as rigid as possible and that there's not any slop. So what I went ahead and did was I disassembled the machine, uh, I took off the standard washers, two of the standard washers, and replaced them with those eccentric nuts because I, I picked up a pack of them, so I had a similar issue not quite the same, but a similar issue a long time ago. So I had a, a bunch of those on hand, reinstalled them, 
put it back together, tighten those up, and I went ahead and reprinted out both the Benchy as well as the tiny uh, Matter Hackers fill test print, and behold, the uh, artifact that was repeatable on all of the prints previously was completely gone. So I was really happy with this. The printer now is fine. Other than that, it's just basically um, tuning profiles. There's some retraction that clearly needs to be fixed uh, on this machine in, in slicing. Um, but yeah, this was, this was awesome. This was a huge win for me. Um, I, I haven't really had to troubleshoot a printer in quite a while. Most of the machines I've been getting do work out of the box, at least to an extent that I would consider passable. Um, so this was kind of a, a rarity for me, at least a little bit in this situation. I haven't done very many kit builds and this isn't a kit build, it's based off the Ender. It's essentially like an Ender 3 clone. Um, but I figured that other people might have this issue as well since it's such a popular design. Uh, if you get a machine two and it doesn't have those eccentric nuts, that is a really simple, uh, I don't even want to call it an upgrade. It's almost a necessary thing to have if you don't have uh, lead screws on both sides that are equally supporting your uh, X carriage as it rides up and down. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I did get some footage for you guys. So that way, if you do have this issue, uh, you will be able to see what I did and um, again, repair it. Uh, this again was on the JG Maker Magic printer, but this is not unique to this machine. I've seen it on plenty of machines that use those extrusions and uh, V-slot wheels, but I figured it'd be fun to share because this is something that I had to deal with. I'm sure I'm not the only person that's gonna have to deal with this. And so hopefully um, this will help one of you guys out there to uh, you know, repair your machine or to upgrade it to um, fix any kind of weird Z artifacts you're getting from a uh, X carriage that just doesn't have enough um, tolerances or it's not tight enough. There's some slop which is causing problems. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if this is something you've experienced on a machine. Um, Again, the enders are potentially susceptible to it, but because they have the eccentric nuts, you wouldn't have to upgrade it. You would just tighten them. So it's really part of the build. Uh, I'm actually pretty shocked that this machine doesn't have those. I think it should be a standard um, for all of these style machines, but uh, it wasn't in this situation. So hope you guys are all doing well. I've got some really cool reviews, lots of really cool product reviews and some awesome projects coming your way. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome videos. And I hope you guys all have a great week. See you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.